Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and today we're going to continue our series on emission control systems. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about catalytic converters, uh, why we've got them, what they're intended to do, and how they achieve that. So, long before converters were ever put on cars, they were first used on uh, smokestacks in uh, industrial applications. Uh, eventually, they got uh, like fitted to like forklift and other equipment engines, and eventually the uh, uh, mass-produced uh, U.S. auto market. But that couldn't happen until one very important thing happened. That is that we stopped using leaded gasoline because TEL, uh, triethyl lead, I think it is, uh, the lead component in leaded gasoline, it was added as an anti-knock agent so that they could have higher compression ratios and get higher performance, but it is no good for catalytic converters. Uh, it would it would coat them or you know put a layer of uh, contaminants over the catalyst and then they would be completely useless because the exhaust gases would no longer be exposed to the catalyst material inside the converter. So, uh, but back in 1970, uh, Congress passed the Clean Air Act which formed the EPA and it kind of set the stage for the phasing out of leaded gasoline and the introduction and eventually the uh, mandatory application of catalytic converters. So starting in 1975, most US vehicles had catalytic converters, uh, but these converters, the early ones like the 75 up to 80, they were two-way converters because they only addressed the, uh, the two things in the exhaust, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. But in 1981, uh, the three-way converter, which added the reduction of NOx, N-O-X, or oxides of nitrogen, uh, that was introduced and it basically just completely replaced the older two-way converters, made them obsolete. And it is essentially exactly the same kind of converter we still use today. So let's take a look at a three-way converter, uh, which is what you'll find on all uh, automobiles nowadays in the US at least um, and we'll talk about how they work you know what we want them to do and how they achieve that so let's first look at what we have coming out of the engine uh, predominantly on on your engine what you're gonna have coming out is NOx oxides of nitrogen uh, CO2 CO uh, which is carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide O2 which is just leftover oxygen uh, hydrocarbons and H2O, which is water. Uh, hydrocarbons are the uh, unburnt fuel, the fuel that made it through the engine and did not get burned. It makes it into the exhaust and it is dealt with in the converter. Uh, of these things, what we do not like and what we want to uh, try to correct with the converter are NOx, NOx, like I said, the three-way converter moving up from the two-way converter added the reduction of NOx. Carbon monoxide because it kills people, that is not good. And uh, the unburnt hydrocarbons. Now CO2, it is not, it's not the, uh, the best thing in the world. We're not the biggest fans of it, but we like it more than we like carbon monoxide. So we, uh, we make it. And it's a byproduct. It's one of the results of combustion with fossil fuels. So really can't get away from it. It's going to be there. Uh, and then water, obviously, water is fine. It is, you see on, sometimes on your muffler, the tailpipe, you'll see water drain out. Uh, and that's because water is a natural product of combustion. It's going to be present in the exhaust. Most of the time in the exhaust, and especially in the converter, because of the temperature, it's going to be in the form of steam. But, so, what we're addressing are oxides of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons. Now, to take care of those things, there are two catalysts in the converter. Now, they're called catalysts, and it's called a catalytic converter because they have uh, elements on them. They have precious metals on them. They use uh, platinum, rhodium, and palladium uh, primarily. And what they do is they act as, excuse me, a catalyst in the fact that the exhaust gases, when they're exposed to them, 
it causes a reaction, uh, a couple reactions. And that is how we change the exhaust gases that are present. Uh, and we'll walk through how. But when, you, when these exhaust gases flow into the converter, there's these, uh, the catalysts are designed so that you don't block the flow of exhaust gases because you couldn't plug it up. Um, you actually need to let the exhaust gases continue to flow through. So there's two catalysts. One will be up here at the front of the converter and one is at the back of the converter. And they are like a honeycomb or a grid or these opposed triangles. These are the three big designs you're gonna run into where you've got like a grid of square tubes that go through or a honeycomb shaped uh, grid, uh, honeycomb shaped tubes that will go through or these like opposed triangles, you run into those as well. But uh, these catalyst materials shaped like that are coated uh, with the catalyst material. Uh, that's what we'll walk through when we talk about the, the two catalysts. The first one being reduction, which is, which is the part that does the reduction of NOx, uh, oxides of nitrogen. And then the second part is where we take care of the carbon monoxide and the uh, uh, hydrocarbons. That's the oxidation catalyst. That's where uh, we turn the carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and where combustion takes place. Um, and we'll talk about combustion at the end too and the, the role it plays in all of this. So, and like I said, it's quite literally, it's not like, you know, you've got them side by side and it mixes over them. No, it goes through the reduction catalyst completely before it even gets to the oxidation catalyst. So they are in line. At first is the reduction catalyst, then there's a space, and then there's the oxidation catalyst, and then it will carry on out uh, on further down the exhaust. So let's take a look at the reduction catalyst and how that works. Okay, so I've got this little drawing and this is gonna help us walk through how the reduction catalyst works. So this green line at the bottom here, this is the catalyst surface. This represents those tubes that I was talking about, the different shapes, tubes that have the catalyst on them. This represents one of those planes coated with uh, uh, platinum and rhodium for the reduction catalyst. So what we have coming in is uh, NO2 and NO primarily. Uh, those are the oxides of nitrogen. And as they flow in, our NO2 uh, and N NO as well, but uh, NO2 comes in and the nitrogen wants to bond with the catalyst. And that is how the, the catalyst functions, is it, it causes uh, things to happen. It causes a catalyst reaction when these two uh, elements come in contact with each other. So the nitrogen is going to want to bond to the platinum and rhodium catalyst. And once it does, and it's traveling along attached to the uh, catalyst, it's going to uh, weaken the bonds with the oxygen. And then the oxygen is going to float away from it, and then you'll have oxygen uh, single oxygens floating around out here, but O2 is more stable than uh, just O, so whenever two find each other, they'll hook up and they'll get together and they'll carry on, and then we have O2. Now, the nitrogen that is left down here on the catalyst surface, when they run into another nitrogen, they will be attracted to each other, and they will form a bond. And once the two, two individual nitrogens form a bond and become in two, they will be less attracted to the catalyst and they'll break the bond with the catalyst and they'll move on and carry on out of the exhaust or down, sorry, into the next uh, part of the converter. So that is how this catalyst takes NOx or like NO2 or even NO, brings it in and splits it up and rearranges it to turn it into N2 and O2, which is nitrogen and oxygen, which is perfectly fine and perfectly safe. Oxygen is actually rather important because oxygen plays a big role in the next part of the converter. Although 
the, uh, the reduction catalyst is not the only source of oxygen in the converter. It is a, uh, a significant source of it, but it's not the only source. There's oxygen in the exhaust left over from uh, combustion as you know we've cycled rich and lean. But this does generate O2 and that does play a big part in the next catalyst, which is the oxidation catalyst. Okay, so in the oxidation catalyst, we're going to be dealing with carbon monoxide and it's also where combustion takes place in the converter. So uh, let's talk through the uh, carbon monoxide uh, first. So we have carbon monoxide, CO, and O2, which comes not only left over in the exhaust from the engine, but also from the reduction catalyst at the first part of the converter. Uh, they, they'll float in here. Now this CO, carbon monoxide, and the O2, they'll both want to bond. They'll both be attracted to this platinum and palladium catalyst. Again, this represents the surface of those uh, catalysts that we talked about, the different shaped uh, tubes that flow through. So once the CO and the O2 bond with the catalyst, the O2 will not want to, the bond with each other will be weakened and they'll want to split up. But once they split up they, and they run into one of these uh, CO molecules here, uh, the oxygen will want to bond with it. And then it will form CO2, carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, uh, much like when the N2 is formed in the first part of the converter, once it forms, it does not want to, it's not as attracted to the catalyst anymore. It'll break the bond with the catalyst and it will carry on uh, in the exhaust. So that's how, it, basically the same process, how we use uh, this catalyst to change carbon monoxide uh, and O2 into CO2, uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, the thing to stress about both of these catalysts is that it's not like all of the exhaust comes in, it all does the first step, then it all does the second step, and then it all does the third step. It's, it's always going on all over the catalyst. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, you, you can't like look at this and think all the exhaust comes in, does that, then does that, then does that. It's all going to be happening, and it's all based on attraction. At different times, uh, attraction and what uh, any given oxygen or carbon or... Uh, nitrogen is going to be attracted to. But by and large, as you have this input, these reactions will take place throughout the converter uh, or the catalyst, and then this will be your output. Uh, so it's always taking place. There's always each step of that going on in the con inside the catalyst for both the reduction and the oxidation. Uh, but what does help both of those catalysts reaction take place is heat. Now yes we do have exhaust gases coming in so it's going to heat up and it's going to be hot but the catalyst or the, the sorry the uh, catalytic converter does have a bit of a secret weapon when it comes to making these reactions happen easier and that is that it can produce its own extra heat through the process of combustion when we take care of the hydrocarbons. So let's look at how uh, combustion works. Okay, combustion, right there, right? No, we, we don't need to worry about that. Um, I did work through that just kind of for myself, but that's not what we're gonna focus on because you don't need to worry about that stuff. We'll focus on what combustion looks like and just generally how it applies to the converter. So, we have hydrocarbons, and I wanna, I wanna point a few things out here. What I'm using in this example is uh, is C4H10. That, that hydrocarbon is not fully representative of gasoline. Gasoline is a mixture of so many different hydrocarbons that you couldn't just grab one and say this is completely representative of uh, gasoline. So I don't want you to think that like the one molecule or the one hydrocarbon I'm showing here is what gasoline looks like. It's not. It's a mixture of stuff. But we can look at it and see how it breaks down and what uh, what takes place. So when uh, 
when you, you bring in these two hydrocarbons, if, if you look at this equation that I wrote out there, that it, it took me a while to, to figure that one out. I'm not a chemist, I'm not an expert, but, so basically this says to people much smarter than me what this picture right here says, okay? We have two C4H10 and we have 13 O2. Combustion takes place when the hydrocarbons react with the oxygen and the heat that's already in the converter uh, and the heat from the rest of the combustion will help this process on. Uh, they will, once they are broken apart, uh, attraction, like I talked about before, attraction takes over what's attracted to what and as a rule of thumb, generally you will have this outcome. It's not just all of these split up, oh, I'll match you up, match you up, match you up, and then you have this. It's just kind of like a soup of everything and then attraction starts to put, come into play and carbon, you know, the, o, the two oxygens will find carbon and the two hydrogen and, and one oxygen, they'll meet up. Uh, you'll have impurities and little things that come out of it, but uh, CO2 and H2O are the products of combustion when you're burning fossil fuels. Now, if you look at this, the thing to point out and how they call this balanced on each side is exactly what this picture shows. You have the same number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on this side as you do on this side. But the key thing here is the energy released when these bonds are broken is more than the energy it takes to form the bonds on that side. And that's all this is. Energy released and then energy consumed. But there's more energy released than consumed. So the energy that is on this side uh, and then that's released, the excess energy, it is released as heat and light. Now there is a little bit of light released because the converter, the substrate in there can start to glow, but most of it's released in heat. And that's what I was talking about, how combustion takes care of hydrocarbons. It does create more carbon, uh, carbon dioxide and H2O. That's, those are what happen when you have combustion. But it generates the heat that the entire converter is going to use to make the catalyst reactions happen much more efficiently and much easier because the heat just kind of gets everything moving and once everything's moving and the catalyst reactions that are likely to happen will happen, uh, attraction takes over and that's how the whole converter, that's how everything works as it was explained to me. Everything is just what's attracted to what at any given point in time. And that is the whole idea behind the catalyst reaction. We take advantage of what is attracted to different things to turn stuff we don't like into stuff we're more okay with. So, in a nutshell, without diving into super deep and complicated chemistry that quite honestly I'm not, I'm not an expert in, I don't understand as well as some of you probably understand it. Um, without diving into that, this is how catalytic converters work. Now, catalytic converters are rather controversial in some uh, aspects. Some people absolutely hate them. They think they have no business being on cars, they think they rob horsepower, they think all sorts of bad stuff. Um, and the simple fact is, in my opinion, I don't think it's true. I, I mean, they, they have cap catalytic converters that are designed more for a performance uh, uh, mindset that are you know, they flow a little bit more uh, unrestricted because even though we try not to restrict the exhaust, the flow through the converter can slightly restrict it. But there's a lot of engineering on the manufacturer side that goes into deciding, you know, what shape they're going to use, how big the openings are going to be, how long they're going to be, all of that stuff. There's a lot of R&D that goes into designing these systems so that the whole exhaust system and the engine and everything works together, including the converter. So I don't think converters are bad. I think they're good. I think they have played a huge role in reducing the amount of smog and pollution in many major, uh, sorry, major uh, metropolitan areas in the U.S. Uh, and all over the country. Uh, you can go, and they say you, you can look at pictures, old, old pictures before catalytic converters were widespread of what some of these cities looked like, and it, it, it looks like there's a cloud around the city, around the whole area. And now that we are not just in the automotive industry, but all over, we're more conscious of what pollutants we're putting out, these cities aren't quite as nasty looking. So, yes, 
converters have problems. They, they can overheat, they can get coated, they can stop working, they can set check engine lights. Anything you put on a car will have problems. Anything whatsoever. Mufflers have problems. Just exhaust pipes have problems. They rust out. Um, but overall, I say the good of the converters far outweigh any negative effects we get uh, at, you know, in the form of problems working on the cars. The other thing I want to point out in this video, though, you know, this is, we're just talking about how the converter works, but the other thing I want to point out is if you look at the reactions we talked about, those catalysts, the, uh, the platinum and the rhodium, and then the platinum and the palladium, none of those reactions consumed any portion of those catalysts. Under normal engine operation, when everything's going right, the engine just brings in air and fuel, burns it, sends it out, converter takes care of the extra stuff, changes it, sends it down the exhaust. There is no consumption whatsoever in the converter. A converter is not a wear item. Under normal conditions, when everything's going right, they do not just wear out. If you have replaced a converter, you need to find out what caused that converter to fail. Something coated it, something overheated it, you, uh, you misfire, dumping e extra too much fuel down the exhaust, uh, overheated the converter. They can fail in so many different ways. Uh, they can overheat and then uh, get quenched, like you can get real hot from too much extra fuel, go through a puddle of water and it can actually fracture the catalysts inside. Uh, it can get too hot, it can start to melt down. Uh, one of the catalyst material, I think it's, uh, its melting point is like 2,800 degrees, and these can run like 16, 1,700 degrees. So, if you uh, if you get too much fuel and you start building that heat and you can't get it out of there, you could start to melt down the converter. Uh, they can have all sorts of problems. They can just plug up, uh, and so if you have a problem with your converter, you need to figure out what killed the converter, or the question we ask in the industry: What killed the cat? Because if you don't find out what killed it, you're going to put a new one on there and it's going to do the same thing to that one. And that's why some people think aftermarket catalytic converters, oh, they're just junk, they don't work so well. Well, the problem isn't that the converter doesn't work. The problem is that you put the converter in a system that was trying to kill it. And it did. So, uh, that's just a little extra takeaway. But I really hope that this video helped you understand how these catalytic converters work. Uh, I hope you learned something from it, and I hope you will come back and uh, catch the next video with me where we will continue to learn. Thank you, and I will see you guys in the next video.